From atheism to astrophysics, from evolution to economics, from comparative religion to cults, from philosophy to politics, a voice of reason in our confused world and beacon of truth and hope in this age of uncertainty. Welcome to God and Science Foundation with physician, teacher, and evangelist, Dr. Paul Katupali. Dr. Paul's teaching helps you understand the vital issues affecting our world from a biblical worldview. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. What happened at uh, St. Helens is a very tragic story. In fact, today is May 18, and we are remembering the St. Helens, Mount St. Helens volcanic eruption that happened exactly 30 years ago in 1980 in the state of Washington. It killed 57 people on this day in 1980. And it is a tragic event. I mean, the, if you look into the details, it's just staggering. And this mount, this volcano, is located like 90 miles south of Seattle in the state of Washington. And uh, people could see that ash as far as Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota. And it started with the eruptions like uh, there was like a vent, 250 mile vent on the top of the mount. And uh, there was a blast. And this blast that happened in March that year, it took the ash like 10,000 feet into the air. And that ash fell, some of it fell in Spokane, like 300 miles away from that place. And the state and federal authorities, they evacuated a lot of people. And there is one guy, his name is Harry Truman. He was the one who refused to move. And he was giving, I lived here all my life, I don't have to move. And he got like a lot of positive media coverage for his decision. And he became a national icon. But ultimately, tragically, he died. Harry Truman died and other 57 people died. So this is a very, very like 5.1 magnitude earthquake. And an eruption that rocked the whole mountain. The north side of the peak rippled and blasted out ash. I mean, the speed is like 650 miles per hour. And a cloud of ash and rock and uh, that uh, gas and also the glacial ice and it rolled down the mountain at a speed of 100 mph and it destroyed everything in its course. And the total river, I mean this river was covered with 150 feet debris for like 14 miles. And the magma went into like 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. And you see the power was like 24 megaton blast. It covered an area of 230 square miles around the mountains. Now there are important things I want to tell about this. You see, evolutionists tell us that sedimentary layers, they take millions of years to form. That's a lie. You know, 650 foot sedimentary layer, 650 foot. 650 that foot sedimentary layer was formed here within a few hours that is a big lie that it takes millions of years to form sedimentary layers folks mount saint helens eruption is a classic example to deny that lie told by evolutionists and it also formed canyons, and this is called Little Grand Canyon, actually. Because you see, when the water, it went like an avalanche, that glacial ice, when it melted, and this water, it formed, like, it caused a lot of erosion in these sedimentary layers. So Mount St. Helens, and it melted a snow peak and it uh, created a destructive flood of water which became a mud flow 
And this mud flow, it destroyed everything in its course, like trees and rocks and, uh, and even the debris deposits, they formed, they actually entirely covered the river in the vicinity. So you see the destructive force. And also the fresh basalt, you know the fresh basalt, when they did these radiometric studies, it showed to be like 2 million years. Again, another big lie. <laughs> A fresh basalt rocks was shown to be 2 million years. So you think of the inaccuracy and the unreliability of these radiometric methods perpetually uh, supporting evolution, always shown by Darwinian folks. So the erosion here caused like a Grand Canyon, a small Grand Canyon. If you see, if you go to Grand Canyon in Arizona, the, um, what do the guide tell you? Oh, it takes millions of years to form this Grand Canyon. That is nonsense. Within a few hours, they formed a canyon in St. Helens. And there are like uh, 4 million trees were destroyed by this volcanic eruption. These four million trees, think of the number folks, four million trees, they were washed into the nearby lake and they formed as upright. Upright, they, they are just being submerged into the water as upright, like uh, the branches on the top and the roots at the bottom and they are being deposited in layers. You see, it doesn't take millions of years to form these layers. If you go to Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, what do the scientists tell these Darwinian evolutionary scientists? They say those petrified forests took millions of years, thousands of years from layer to layer. That is nonsense. Here at Mount St. Helens, we are seeing different layers of trees being formed from the same event. What does it tell you, folks? It doesn't take millions of years to form the sedimentary layers. It doesn't may take millions of years to form fossils because some of these trees are already being petrified and they are changing into fossils. And it, does, it doesn't take millions of years to form canyons because a little Grand Canyon is being formed in St. Helens. So as we remember St. Helens on its 30th anniversary, it's very important to see and expose the lies propagated by evolutionists. It doesn't take millions of years to have these dramatic events. That's what we read in Genesis chapter 6, the global flood. And if you maximize, they magnify these events, you will see that sedimentary layers and fossils all over the world giving ample evidence, ample scientific evidence for Genesis global flood. And what do we learn from this? You see, God judged the whole world because of its sin. And God is warning us that he would judge us again in the near future. And the good news is you don't have to die in your sins and go to hell and bear that punishment for eternity. God sent his son, Lord Jesus Christ, to die in your place. In your place, Jesus died and paid the penalty. And if you put your trust in Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved from hell and God will give you the eternal life in heaven. Put your trust in Lord Jesus Christ. And that's will give you a hope and a meaning to your life. And God's word is true, my friend. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. Please visit us at www.godandsciences.org. God and Science Foundation is a listener-supported ministry, and we encourage you to consider a prayerful online donation to our ministry as we reach thousands of people around the United States and the world with the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ and basics of Christian worldview. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.